we're doing here is explaining number 1423, a Southern Pacific diesel switching locomotive. And now you're getting a view of it from the cab. And now we're looking at the diesel engine, a V12 diesel engine over here. And over here is the big 600 volt DC generator that generates the electricity for the motors which are down underneath each pair of wheels has its own motor and so it's actually an electric locomotive that carries its own power supply with it and then that big unit up there that is a blower that provides air to the uh, cylinders of the engine and there's the big air intake and that blower pressurizes the cylinders so and here's the there's the uh, let's see there's the engine up there a v12 engine General Motors V12, and uh, nice that you can see it, all the doors are open. And then down here, at this end, we have the air compressor here that keeps the air for the air brakes, and the air tank is down here, that's the air tank right there. And then the brake cylinders, which are air, are right here. And that provides the brakes for the uh, for the wheels. And uh, let's see what else can we say about it. Well, let's go around the other side a little bit and look some more. stripes on it. And uh, that's about all I can tell you about it. So if you want <laughs> if you want to go around and look at it on the sunshine side, we can do that. sits to control the whole train up there so and this can go either direction so when you say whether it's the front or the back it depends on which way it's going both ends of the front and both ends of the back but that's a diesel locomotive thank you okay <laughs> when I was a brake <laughs> when I was a brakeman on the railroad in Sacramento one of the things we had to do when we uh, had to connect the cars was work the air brake hose that's this and you had to make sure that for safety reasons you hold it against your knee like that so that when you open the valve this doesn't kick away because if it kicks away and you're not holding on to it it can hit you in the knee and that's not very good so you had to learn to hold it like that and then work the handle that's a safety precaution and the other thing you had to do was make sure you never stepped with both feet inside the rail you always had to keep one foot inside and one foot outside because if you had to get out of the way you had to get out of the way quick and there is the coupler and right now it's closed and that's the other part of the brakeman's job is to open the coupler and then make sure that the cars come together and the coupler closes and that's still the way they do it so that's the story as far as the brakeman goes okay. well what we're looking at over here if you want to look at the trucks these trucks are special they don't really belong to this car they belong to a car on the Great Northern Railroad that was called the Great Dome car and the Great Dome car was the same length as this car but the dome was the full length of the car so the car was very big and very heavy so it had special trucks to hold all that weight and so the railroad uh, or the people that owned this car got these trucks they scrapped the car but they got the trucks and put them under this car because this car is also very heavy 
So take a nice view of the car of the uh, trucks. It's got roller bearings. It's got dampers. There's the dampers there. And it's got the torsion bars so that things don't get out of alignment. And it's got a uh, a uh, support here from the body onto the side buffer, which uh, normally uh, you don't see that, but it helps prevent the car from swaying. And then, of course, we've got the brake controls here. And then this device here controls the braking uh, on that axle. In other words, this can detect whether the, the wheels are skidding. If the wheels are skidding, it automatically takes the brakes off so that the wheels don't slip. So that's what that is. And I think I hear the little compressor running in there. That's what it sounds like. Chuck, 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 yeah. And uh, that's about it. I guess I can't tell you anything about that. Okay. So, these couplers are automatic couplers, and to uncouple it, the brakeman will pull on the, this lever here, this is called the cut lever, and he'll yank that out and it releases a pin in the coupler and then the, the car will uncouple. And uh, of course when they come together he doesn't have to do anything, they just slam the couplers together and the pin drops in automatically. But when you uncouple you have to pull this lever up. And then you can see the brake hoses are connected there. You can see that down there? That's the brake hose. So that's how they couple together. Sick. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty far from what uh, you'll see today. Uh, this here's your train brake. Um, you uh, will we'll only control the train. Um, this here's your engine brake, and we'll only control the engine. Um, here's your throttle, and in the spot over here, your camera probably won't see. You uh, put the reverser, which is just forward, neutral, and reverse. This is the bell. Well, I don't have enough air to make it work. This is sand. Uh, you know, whistle cord. Uh, this one's, uh, this engine's rather old, so we actually, we also have a cord for the bell. You can actually <laughs> kind of see it doing its thing up there. Um, on my headlight switches, I can start the engine from here, uh, which is a really nice feature to have on this one. Uh, I got uh, fuel pressure gauge, engine temperature, main rod bearing temperature for uh, the, for the crankshaft, uh, piston cooling temperature. Um, gauge over here, your camera's not going to see. That's our control air. Uh, all the circuitry inside of the inside of the electronic cabinet is uh, mostly run by air or air relays. These are my air brake gauges. Um, the uh, probably the most important part. <laughs> um, handbrake. Uh, usually we'll stick uh, flags or flares in here. And um, pretty much the basics. Do you hit it all? Yeah, you, you drive this then? Uh, I am a student engineer. Oh, okay. I'm actually uh, I'm doing a double duty today. Student engineer and conductor.